Hey guys, and welcome back to the Courageous Nerd YouTube channel for another interview. I'm Connor, and joining me today is actor David Del Rio, you might recognise from Pitch Perfect or In the Heights on Broadway. We're chatting about David's new film, Roadhead, which he directed, and it's available on VOD on June 4th. If you enjoy this interview or any of the others on the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe. So welcome, David, and thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, thanks for having me, Con. I appreciate it. For sure. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe you've been like working professionally as an actor at least for over 10 years. Is that right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. I've been and, I've been in this industry for about 13 years now. Yeah, and I suppose in that time, like, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned that you think more people going in should be aware of? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, it kind of changes every day. You know, I mean, a, a new a new day on set is a new lesson to learn. I feel, but I think, um, you know, kind of always being in a state of uh, curiosity and uh, not sort of being married to your outlook on the world and on life, because you know, basically, our jobs in the industry is sort of to emulate and showcase and to expose the human condition. And I think that we must be students and uh, not scholars and not teachers of, of you know, of the, the human condition. And I feel like uh, in order to be uh, sort of open to share stories, you've got to be open to, to hear them. And mm. uh, once you feel like you got it all figured out, no one wants to watch a movie for someone who's got it all figured out. <laughs> you know, yeah. leave that, leave, you know, leave that to Aaron Sorkin. He is the only one who's got it all figured out. So mm. leave that to him, you know. Yeah. And I mean, I guess um, broadly speaking, like Aaron Sorkin, I mean, you, you yourself have like gone into like directing and producing and which is actually mm. the main reason why we're having this discussion today. But I suppose just the fact that you're also an actor influence mm. how you direct. Sure, it does, um, because for you can kind of weed out the people who are good employees first, uh, and the, you kind of want to work with the people who are good employees, mm. uh, uh, you know, better than being just amazing actors, you know. Yeah. Um, I was just saying in another interview, I do respect Olivia Wilde's no asshole policy, um, mm. and I think that that's, that's really important because at the end of the day, we are um, here to work. Um, and we have a job to do. And um, Dame Judi Dench actually says a quote that I really love, which is, um, you know, take the work seriously, but not yourself. And, yeah. uh, and and once I read that, I was like, okay, I'm keeping that with me for the rest of my career, no matter what I, um, mm. you know, no matter what aspect uh, of it. And, you know, also being an actor, you kind of really understand maybe what's going on with the actors on a certain day, you know, where, yeah. you, you know, sometimes you want to approach an actor and kind of be like, listen, I, 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 there's something going on with you and I understand that, but let's, let's have a time to talk about it later. You know, now mm -hmm. is not the time or the place. So let's go get our margaritas and Applebee's and then, and, 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 and talk it out. What do you say? And, and sometimes, you know, usually most of the time the uh, actors kind of respond to that whether you've like had this happen to you where you've ended up directing someone you've worked with as an actor so like and even if it hasn't like would you imagine that'd be like a, a shift in that relationship because it's a different dynamic to what you had before well you know as a director you are the father the parent um mm -hmm. the therapist <laughs> the um the the coach yeah. Um, and, um, you know, all you want to do is kind of have a safe space for, you know, you got to respect an actor's work, I think, too, in terms of living truthfully under the imaginary circumstance in terms of kind of like they're putting their heart on their sleeve and throwing it on the table, you know, mm. and that's, that's a real, that's a real, that's a real commitment there, yeah. you know, if, if you are, if you are really, I mean, so you kind of always want to set up a space for the actor to be open and show us somewhere in in their heart and veins of something that they they are not even used to experiencing and then on the flip side you also want to create a safe space for the crew uh first and foremost where you say let's tap back into that 14 year old self that gets that has 
a lot of fun and can give no shits about the world uh, and right. just go and, and do it as a rebel and renegade and, and, and just go after the story. You know, you kind of want to be a coach on that end too, where letting the crew know that it's, you don't get the directing title because it's all your ideas. You get the directing mm. title because you are the one who has, who has said yes to the best ideas yeah, whether they're whether they're yours or not, and more more likely than not, uh, they are other people's ideas that I, yeah. that I that I take than my than my own. Yeah, and actually, just kind of looking back on your own career as an actor, you've had like quite mm -hmm. varied projects. I know you've done like children's TV or like kind of aimed towards kids, and like you've been like yeah. feature films, like more mature like network dramas. Like, do any specific jobs for you stand out? Looking back. Oh my gosh. You know, that's, that really is a tough question because they, they are all your kids, those, right. those projects, you know, and, and you put yourself in a certain position to kind of be locked in the hotel room or wherever they have you, you know, have us stay mm. to really, really dive into these characters and 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 you know saying no to people who want to hang out <laughs> because they, mm -hmm. they don't know what your job is like because it's not a nine to five and it's All also right. very it's also a very you know let's i'm not gonna lie it's a very uh, luxurious nice job where you know people are kind of catering to you but you have to understand that they're catering to you because it's their job and not they like not because they like you you know yeah um so, yeah. so the best you can do for a project is to lock yourself in the room and try to figure out how to come in prepared and and the way to prepare is kind of really being one with the character so so you know but I, but I, what i will say um because it's just a little bit more personal to me is um yeah. when i when i did a, a broadway show um in the heights for six months um, right. at the richard rogers theater um only because um i met some really close friends there and uh you know i met my wife there but we didn't we didn't actually meet there we we came in happenstance oh, okay. um so she was she was an audience she was in the audience and then we took a picture together um outside the stage door but then we officially met each other four years later mm. um and so you know that kind of personal story that i have there it kind of makes it you know it's a a, a, a project that stands out for me yeah, I mean, I, I mean, for sure. I mean, even not knowing that story, I mean, I, I think getting a wife out of a project would definitely put that high on your <laughs> list for sure. I mean, oh, totally. I don't think that could happen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I know yeah. like your like new project is uh, Roadhead. It's a horror uh, feature, I guess. And like, I suppose, how would you describe the premise? You know, more specifically to anyone who might be unfamiliar. I would say I would say Roadhead is a horror comedy about three friends who decide to take a uh, desert trip and come across a very weird but extreme villain serial killer dressed as a medieval executioner, and these right. friends need to figure out a way to survive. Uh, despite two out of those three really despising each other. Um, and so that's basically the log line, but to get in a deeper level, you know, what really got me is that story, which is, you know, if David and Connor, which I, which is not the case, but like David yeah. and Connor don't, don't like each other, but we're also stuck in a right. log cabin uh, with someone and outside someone has a rifle, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's the story of kind of like the balance of what you are willing to sacrifice for survival was was what really got me um, interested in the project, as well as the humor, um, where people use humor as a defense mechanism. And that's where the kind of comedy comes in that, you know, I wasn't trying to make a horror comedy in terms of making people laugh, but mm. a horror comedy in, you know, I actually think it's, you know, it's, it's, I think it's a horror that 
has comedic characters and has comedic yeah. real life has real life comedic people uh in it um other than the other way around of just like hey this is a thing that will scare you freak you out weird you out and then also make you laugh that, that those are uh, genres trying to trying to um, achieve a genre is something that I'm not really interested in. I'm just trying to tell a story. Yeah. So I guess then before you like officially signed on to direct, you must have saw it has a lot of um, like creative potential that, or what you could do with it. I think say? you always I think I think I think once you get that spark of inspiration of kind of, you know, it could be something on page 12, 12. And it's one sentence and you're kind of like, Ooh, I want to hold on to that one. And that, and that kind of would really inspire me. So, but the thing that inspired me really is the human story. And, and, and I know it sounds, you know, um, everyone says it, that they're interested yeah. in the human story. And I, and I, and I get that, but, but it, it, there, there is truth to that, you know, nonetheless. Yeah. And obviously I suppose, um, I believe someone named Justin Xavier wrote the screenplay, right. For, um, for Roadhead. And I suppose, yeah. and how, how did you find bringing someone else's uh, like writing and work uh, to life? I think you always, I think you always try to find to bring yourself into it. You know mm. that you that you use the you use the script as a blueprint and not as sacred texts that you know need to be followed. And by the way, I mean not that I'm comparing, but like, you know, there's scripts that you can do that with and scripts that you can't do that with. And yeah. these, this was one of the, and, and again, this was a very, is a low budget indie. So what happens is that you kind of have your experience of what's it like to be a writer in a multi-cam comedy that's constantly changing jokes and constantly mm. trying to make it fresh. And, you know, we were kind of put into position and in and, and a very good position where, you know, we, uh, myself and the actors and, you know, some of the crew, um, you know, came together and, you know, figured out how to, you know, make the script, you know, a, a lot of what you see um, in the film is, you know, our rewrites that we were making yeah. on the day, you know, and, but, but, you know, Justin Xavier, you know, had a really fun and imaginative blueprint for us to uh work from yeah and just thinking with how long like the pandemic has been on i'm not sure when your like production dates were but did the pandemic play into anything or was, was it nope, way not, further back not did it? way further back way further right. back uh we i think we did it we did it in the uh, middle of 2019 so like oh, june yeah. Yeah, like June and uh, way in the clear, yeah, then, yeah. way in the clear. Um, and so and so, but you know, uh, and, but you know, I got to do, I got to do. I mean, twenty twenty, I was very lucky in in my career to continue to be working in twenty twenty, and mm. I did a couple of movies, and and you know, I'm, we got a, I got a show to shoot on in, in September, and and you know, I think um, uh, we we people find a way. You know, people find a way, but you know, while we were in Roadhead, we were completely in the clear. Yeah, and then I guess where can people see Roadhead when it's out? Um, they told me, you know, VOD on June fourth, which is next Friday, and mm. I, I guess I just, I guess I want to say the VOD universe. I just don't know what that really means. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but mm. it it will be out on VOD on um, uh, June fourth. Yeah, and I suppose, are there any other, I mean, you mentioned the show, but are there any other like, upcoming projects you're able to talk about? Yeah, sure. I uh, I produced a fe feature film called The Big Feed um, that's currently in post-production, almost done um, in post-production, and it stars uh, my wife, Catherine Del Rio, um, mm. very talented actress, Ivana Rojas, and Ma uh, Manolo Gonzalez Vergara, um, Sofia's son. And, right. um, and we then also my wife and I have a production company that we just got hired. Um, well, not just, but we've been a month in writing a screenplay um, to get into production sometime in the fall. Um, and so my wife and I are writing that. And then uh, I'm in a television series called Maggie. Um, right. And it, it will be um, airing in ABC. Uh, don't know when, but we start shooting in September. Great. And I suppose maybe like in a like a broader sense, like what do you hope to accomplish with the rest of 2021? Um, you know, I think um, a couple of things, I guess. Um, 
continue working, um, getting my life together <laughs> with, you know, <laughs> um, um, building it back uh, and, and, and kind of embracing the idea of not going back to some whatever normal it was, but to embrace and take head on the new normal and yeah. uh and and find acceptance in that and uh you know continue to be hired to join a team to tell stories um and uh, something that i try to do every day is kind of be in a reflective state in being on the right side of history and best i can yeah and i mean that was actually all like the pre-prepared questions i had but maybe i guess in closing is there anything you'd want to tease about roadhead because obviously we're recording this before it's out so is there anything you might want to you know tease about yeah what's, what's to come? well well listen roadhead is a bonkers movie and if you take a sit back uh, with your popcorn or your, you know, spliff and joint, um, mm. just sit back and, and, and have fun of the ridiculousness of it and um, really enjoy these actors um, um, leading you in a, a, a crazy ride. Absolutely. Yeah. And I guess everyone be sure to look out for it on uh, June 4th. And um, I, I, I guess maybe just to wrap it up by saying thanks again for, taking the time, David. Take care and stay safe. You too as well, Connor. Thank you.